Scott the Fix-It Guy here and today we have a Miele dishwasher that's having a water problem. So this is the incognito model and <clears throat> we got the classic intake drain light flashing and this is due to a problem with the water supply. We'll close that. So more than likely what's happened is the water valve underneath the sink got turned off by accident or the water valve has uh, accumulation of sediment that's blocking the water from going in and the most likely culprit is that the intake valve itself is no longer functioning so we're going to go over in this video how to correct that problem and instead of paying $220 for the melee part this video will show you how to fix it with a generic water valve that only costs forty dollars. So this is an easy procedure that should take you less than an hour and your total cost should end up being anywhere between forty to fifty bucks. A lot better than the 220 for the part from Miele and maybe another 200 for a technician to install it. So this will be a fun one to do and it'll save you a lot of money here are the tools that you'll need to do the procedure correctly. The tools you'll need to do this job are wire cutters, wire strippers, some Teflon tape for sealing the connection, and a Phillips head screwdriver, diagonal pliers that you can use for cutting the tube, and two small electric spade connectors, electrical tape, and a pair of regular pliers. And, and a wrench for disconnecting the water line. And that should do it. This is the intake valve you're gonna need to replace the Miele intake valve. And they only cost about 40 bucks. You can even get them through Amazon. I'll include a part number and also a link for Amazon. Here is the little brass elbow that's needed to connect the water line to your new water valve. So one way to confirm that the water valve is the problem is to go underneath your sink and turn this water valve all the way to the left guarantee, guaranteeing that it's in the full arm position and then I would test the machine again to see if it's going to let in water. If the machine will still not let in water another test you can do is to reach underneath the dishwasher and put your hand on the old intake valve. Here's a picture of the old intake valve. You would then come over to your controls and turn off your dishwasher with the off button here. And then when you turn it back on, it should get rid of that code. So we're gonna turn it back on. And then you can press one of the buttons for the program to start and then close the door and it should let water in. If not, it could be that the valve itself needs to be replaced. One way to confirm that is just put your hand again on this valve once the dishwasher started and you should be able to feel it vibrate. And that would tell you that electricity is getting to the valve. Here's the old valve beneath the sink and it should have a little bit of vibration. This is what the new valve looks like. It's just a simple generic one used on most dishwashers. Very effective. Here are the tools you'll need for the job. An electric screwdriver with Phillips head, Teflon pipe tape for the threads on the elbow. You'll need uh, wire strippers. You'll need diagonal pliers to cut through the blue pipe. Here you take the Teflon pipe tape and you wrap it around the larger of the two 
threaded parts of the elbow. The bigger threaded part of the elbow is the part that will be pushed into the threads, the female threads, on the new water valve. Now using a crescent wrench or a pair of pliers, you want to twist this elbow into the new valve and get it pretty snug with hand tension first and then give it a little bit more of a turn to get it watertight. Next step is safety first. Make sure you unplug your Miele dishwasher before we go to the next part of the procedure. Here's a small nut we're going to remove at the top of the valve, but first we have to make sure that we turn the valve on the wall all the way to the right as many times as we can until it's fully shut before we remove that little nut so we don't have any leaks at all. Now using a pair of pliers or a crescent wrench or the proper size wrench, you can spin this nut off of the old valve. Now using a flathead screwdriver, you can just pry this plastic case off of the old valve. Just gotta pry it in three or four locations to work it loose, and then it should come right off. So now we're taking the case off of the valve. We've exposed it. We can get to the parts now that we have to change. The next thing is to push back the white pipe and hold it back with the vice grip so that you have an area where you can work. Using pliers, we're going to take the hose clamp and loosen it up and move it away from the valve. You want to confirm that the power is off and then use diagonal pliers to cut the power coming to the valve. Next, you want to pull the cut power wire up through this rubber grommet. Now that the wire is freed up, we're going to do the next part, which is to cut the blue hose. You want to measure up about seven inches away from the fill valve and then cut with your diagonal pliers. Now you're going to use your diagonal pliers to split the black power wire into the two sides and then you want to strip back about a quarter inch of wire from each of the sides and then use your spade connectors and crimp them on using a pair of pliers so each of the black wires has a spade connector. Now you've crimped on both of the spade connectors onto the power wires and they're ready to be connected to the valve. Now just slip the blue hose all the way up onto the water valve. Push it up as far to the valve as you can. Here you grab the hose clamp with a pair of pliers and pull it back over the blue hose all the way up toward the valve. You can just slip the hose now back over the blue hose. Now just slip the power connectors on to the terminals. Make sure they're snug and cover them with electrical tape. Now you're ready to reconnect the water line and mount the unit up against the back wall underneath the sink. Now you're ready to test the system. Just turn your water valve all the way to the left and make sure you've plugged the unit back in. This is Scott the Fix-It Guy saying thank you so much for watching this video and you should get another 10 years of life with this new intake valve. Please support our channel by subscribing. Thanks a lot.